Okay, Pascal's triangle starts with a very simple rule and it's basically a little, it's almost like a game you would play uh, and a child could put this together, you know, a, a small child 11 or 12 years old and maybe that was, that might have been about as old as Blaise Pascal was when he got a little bored, had a sheet of paper in front of him and made up a little game where he started with a number one and then below that, you'd imagine that there are zeros on either side of the one, and so zero plus one makes one. And you put the number in between the imaginary zero and the one. And you do it on this side too, because of course there's zeros that go on forever in this direction as well. And so zero plus one is also one. Okay, fine. And then you do the same thing again here. Zero and one make one. Zero and one on this side make one, but hold on, there's a gap in the middle. We can say that one and one make two. There we go. So far, so good. Now, the zeros don't really matter, except they give us the basis. They give us a reason for regenerating these ones on the ends. But the ones in the middle, the, basically you're just adding the two numbers above and getting the number below. So two and one make three, one and two make three, and you get one, three, three, one. And you keep going like that, okay? One, five, four and six is 10, six and four is 10 again, five, one. Notice that all the numbers have a certain symmetry. They go towards some high value in the middle and they decrease again back to one. And we can keep going. One, six, 15, 10 and 10 is 20, 10 and five is 15 again, five and one is six and we get one. Oh, six, and finally one. Okay, so that's Pascal's triangle. The fact that there are weird patterns. Well, for one thing, you can see these are all ones, that's one thing. But then in the next row, so this is like r equals zero. r equals zero goes all the way along here. r equals one goes all the way along here. So, and they, and notice that these numbers happen to be sequential. One, two, three, four, five, six. But these numbers, the, the numbers in r equals 2 are a little peculiar. 1, 3, 6, 10, 15. What can we make of those numbers? Well, it turns out that the number 1 is a number you could fit like this. The number 3, the next number in the sequence, you can fit three objects like this. The number 6, you can fit six objects like this. So this is like one object which fits in a triangle, another three objects which also fit in a triangle of two rows, six identical objects fit in a triangle of three rows. These are actually called the triangular numbers. So every time we want it, um, every time we want to get the next number in the sequence we simply add a row. So we have one plus two plus three, we just add four more and we get 10 circles for the 10. And then we add five to the gaps in the circles and we have 15 of these circles for the number 15 in the Fibonacci, in, in the, sorry, in the Pascal's, um, um, Pascal's triangle for the triangular numbers. One, four, 10, and 20 are called the tetrahedral numbers. They happen when you can put, say, this, like let's say these are round oranges or something, or golf balls or whatever, three-dimensional objects, three-dimensional round objects like, you know, baseballs or golf balls or something. I arrange three, three in a triangle like this, I can place this uh, baseball on top of those three baseballs. And I got four baseballs. So here I got one, and then to put this on top of that, I make a tetrahedron and I end up with four baseballs and I put the one and then I take the four and I place it on top of this triangle and it fits nicely and four plus six make ten okay and then I go for and then I I place the one on top of this I place the whole thing on top of this and I place all of that on top of this And one plus two plus, sorry, one plus three plus six is 10, but another 10 make 
20. These are called the tetrahedral numbers. These are called the triangular numbers. These are just called, well, just the counting numbers. No, no, no special name there. The rest of these numbers going down these rows don't have names, at least not names that I know. Um, there are many other kinds of things that can come out of this. What's 11 to the power 0? Well, that's just 1. What's 11 to the power 1? Well, that's 11. What's 11 to the power 2? That's 121. What's 11 to the power 3? Well, if you figure that out on your calculator, that's 1,331. What's 11 to the power 4? 1, 4, 6, 4, 1. These are numbers on Pascal's triangle. 1 and 1 make 2. 1 and 2 make 3. 2 and 1 make 3. 1 and 3 make 4. 3 and 3 make 6. 3 and 1 make 4. So you can see these all regenerate Pascal's triangle. The, the pattern gets broken. Um, at least it gets broken in a, in a rather peculiar way by the time you get to 11 to the 5th. So 11 to the 5th if we work that out, sorry, if we work this out on a calculator, 11 to the fifth power is 161051, 161,051. So it doesn't quite, the pattern is sort of broken here. 161051. Oh, well, 1 and 4 make 5, 4 and 6 make, okay, 10, 4 and 6 make another 10. Um, but anyway, it sort of, it sort of um, gets a little, gets away on you a bit. And one and five make, make five, but because we have a ten and ten's a two-digit number, the tens place of the one gets added to the five to make six. If you want to carry the, if you want to think of the pattern as having carried through, but uh, most people usually think the pattern very obviously ends here and after that you got to do some trickery to imagine it as working. So there's that. Also, also there's this. It gets, uh, things get just weirder and weirder as we go. So how about, how about this one? A plus B, a binomial to the power one is simply a plus b. Well, you know, a plus b to the power 0 makes 1, right? What about a plus b to the power 2? Well, you know a perfect square is going to be a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. The coefficients are 1, 2, and 1. So you can see here that we have uh, a bunch of binomial expansions that follow Pascal's triangle if you just look at the coefficients. And notice we had some very easy expansions, and easy in the sense that a, a and b are just plain old variables, nothing special about them. And uh, this expansion relates to the binomial theorem. Now, in, if you want to know more about the binomial theorem, you can take the data management course when you get into grade 12, and we go into it in some depth. For now, though, we will use Pascal's triangle as a guide. Okay, so let's take a look at something like 2x plus 3 to the power 3. What does that look like when we expand it? Now, of course, you can use FOIL if you want. That means you would have to do 2x plus 3 squared and then find out what 2x plus 3 squared is when that expands, multiply it by 2x plus 3 again, and get your trinomial. I'm going to apply Pascal's triangle, but in order to do that, I'm going to let a equal 2x. This is going to be my a. My b is just going to be 3. So then, that means all I have to do then is copy this down, because it already has a's and b's in it. So a plus b to the power 3. Remember the coefficients go 1, 3, 3, 1. But then what about those patterns on uh, the exponents? Well, we have a cubed plus 
a, what's the exponent on a? Well, you look here at the previous term and take away one. So that leaves two. And then b, because it hasn't appeared there before, it just becomes b to the power one. Plus three, and then a, take away one from two is just one. And then b, you add one, a b squared. Okay, notice that we're just taking away one from a, but as we go, we're adding one to b's exponent. And finally, we get to b cubed. Now to do the substitution step. We have to substitute this for a and this for b and use our laws of, um, use our laws of exponents to guide us through. So this becomes 2x all to the power 3 because that's what a is, right? Uh, plus, we add to it 3 and then a squared, 2x all squared times 3, okay, plus 3, and then a is 2x times b squared, well that's 3 squared, plus the last term is b cubed, that's just 3 all cubed, okay. Now we got to work all this out. This is where I advise you, mistakes are easy to make here, very easy to make because sometimes you'll just grab a whole bunch of steps in your head. And that's where the mistakes come, is where you try to do multiple steps in your head at once. If it means that you just have to expand 2x to make 4x squared and leave it in a bracket, if, if this is, you know, 4x squared times 3 and then don't deal with these 3s until later, then that's fine. You can do that. Here we have, by the laws of exponents, 2 cubed and then x cubed. And right now I'm not thinking about what any of this equals. But here I got 3 times 2 is 6. x is just to the power 1, so that's x, times 3 squared. Well, 3 squared is 9. I can figure that out in my head. But right now I'm not working anything out between the different parts of the coefficient. Also, 3 cubed is going to be 27. Okay, great. What about, okay, 2 cubed, let's start finalizing things now. 2 cubed is 8. We have 8x cubed. 3 times 4 is 12. 12 threes are 36, so plus 36, and what's this x? x squared, plus 6 times 9 is 54, x, x just has a power 1, plus 27. This is our expanded version of 2x plus 3 to the power 3. Okay, and like I said, if you need to take extra steps to work out little bits at a time, don't be afraid to do that. It's not just about showing your work. It's also about getting it right. And if you need to take little steps and just do one little thing at a time, go for it. Go and do it. Okay, I'm not going to take marks off. If you, um, if you, you know, uh, don't do this whole thing in one step, which would be very difficult to do, I admit. Like, for example, going here straight to the answer, I don't know if very many people would do that, even with foil, foil it also becomes problematic, it becomes a lot of steps, and there's a lot to get mixed up about here, okay? But as you can see, you apply Pascal's triangle and it gives you a scheme by which to do, do the expansion and resolve your coefficients in a more efficient manner. At least that's what I see when I apply the binomial theorem. So let's say that we have something like, and this is on page 376 of your textbook, you have y over 2 subtract y squared raised to the power 4. And this is something we haven't dealt with before. A negative sign, a subtraction inside a bracket. Well, if we do a plus b to the power 4, uh, it's going to be 1, 4, 6, 4, 1. So it's going to be a to the power 4 plus 6 a cubed b plus 4, sorry, 1, 4, 6, 4, 1. This goes the other way. 4a cubed b plus 6 a squared b squared plus 4 a b cubed plus simply b to the fourth. So this is your expansion, except 
we didn't put our let statements down. Let a equal y halves, or y over 2, and let b equal... Now, this is the tricky part. Remember there's a minus sign here? You include the minus sign. And that way, you can get away with putting a plus sign here and just treating this as a normal expansion of a normal Pascal's triangle. When you do your substitution of b, don't forget your minus sign. And then work out your minus sign as you go. Okay? So, this becomes y over 2 all to the power 4. This is going to be a bit of a mess. I might take more than one line. Plus 4y over 2 cubed times negative y squared. Notice it's to the power 1, so I don't put another power there. But I, I don't do the same thing here. This is going to be 6a squared, so y over 2 squared times b squared, which is negative y squared. And since b is squared, we have to square this. We have to square the square, basically. And then we got two more terms left. I need a second line, as I was saying. 4a squared, uh, sorry, 4a, a is y over 2, times b cubed, negative y squared cubed. And b to the fourth. So then we have plus negative y squared to the fourth. So you can see now there's a lot of nested, uh, nested uh, powers here. And so this will take a bit of thinking to work out. Like I said, take your time. Don't, don't beat yourself up over this. This is going to be y to the fourth over 2 to the fourth. And I'm just going to keep going for this is going to be y cubed over 2 cubed. I'm just going, I'm not thinking about what 4 over 2 cubed is going to be. I'm just, I, I'm just leaving everything there. And this is negative y squared. Because the negative, remember, this is negative y times y. It's not negative y times negative y. This is negative y times y, meaning that the result will be negative. That means that we have to change this into a minus sign, and I'm just going to put y squared here. And never mind the minus sign, I already took care of it. Now, what about the minus sign here? I got negative y squared here. I got negative, negative y times y times negative y times y. That's two negatives. So a negative times a negative is a positive, so that plus stays there. I have a 6. I have a, a y squared over 2 squared. I'll just leave it as, as that. I'm not going to bother to think about it. And then this becomes y squared squared, y to the 2 times 2, which is y to the 4th. Okay, plus 4y over 2. So 4 times, 4 times y over 2, I can think of this one a little easier, because I can just think of 4 divided by 2. And that makes 2, and so that makes that a 2. That gets rid of that 2, and you're left with a y. And then you got negative y squared cubed. That's a negative y squared times a negative y squared times a negative y squared. That's three negatives, so that makes this negative, and now I don't have to think about the negative anymore. This becomes y squared cubed. And for the moment, I'm not thinking about the exponent. Now let's look at the last term plus negative y squared to the 4. So ne because 4 is an even number, I'm multiplying by negative 1 an even number of times, meaning I can keep this plus sign and, not, and never think about it again for that term. So that becomes y squared to the 4. 2 times 4 is 8. This is y to the 8th. Okay, let's work things out a little more now that we have this partially worked out. So here we have basically y to the fourth over 2 to the fourth as a simplification of this. This becomes y to the fourth over 16. We have 4 times y cubed over 2 cubed. 4 cubed over 2 cubed is a half because 2 cubed is 8, so 4 over 8, right, is 1 half. y cubed times y squared is y to the fifth because you add the exponents. For 3y to the sixth, 6 over 4, two, 2 squared is 4, 6 over 4 is 3 halves y squared times y to the 4 means you add the exponents to make y to the 6th. 
and then for for this one, 2y times y squared cubed. y squared cubed is 2 times 3, which is 6. That's y to the 6 plus 1 makes 7. And then y to the 8 is just y to the 8. Okay, so this looks like uh, this looks like the uh, expansion of of uh, this uh, particular uh, binomial. So this becomes y halves minus y squared all to the power 4 and that's what we get. Now in the textbook uh, do they have yeah it looks like term for term it's identical but uh, one of the side effects when you have a minus sign in your binomial is that notice that inside the binomial you have alternating plus and minus signs which is expected because you have a minus sign here so what happens in reality when you actually really expand these is you get alternating plus and minus signs so that's what you should see when you do a binomial expansion involving a minus in the middle here so that's just a little bit of a heads up